On December 30th, off the coast of Aruba, divers from the Aruban Police Force and the research vessel Persistence were about to make a crucial dive on a promising target in the search for Natalie Holloway. The researchers had discovered a fish trap about 90 feet below the surface, in almost the exact spot search expert Tim Miller had theorized Natalie's body might be. Team leader Tim Trahan suited up to join the Aruban police divers as Tim Miller wished him well. Tim, get her. It's a big day. It's a big day. The divers hit the water, and the ROV was sent down to capture what would happen for everyone watching on board. You got any divers you see? Rod, we have visual on divers and target. Slowly, the divers worked their way down to the trap. They had been instructed to give a thumbs up or thumbs down. He wants the ROV. Yeah, he wants the ROV. The atmosphere in the survey room was tense, and nerves were raw as Miller, the Aruban authorities, and the crew of the Persistence waited for word of what exactly was in the trap. The divers approached the target and signaled above. And then... Down. Crushing disappointment. Divers are coming up right now, so I don't know. It looked as promising today as I did last night or, or before. Nothing. That had to be a crushing blow. It was a crushing blow. Now, Tim Miller had to deliver that same crushing blow to Natalie's parents. How hard was it for you to dial? their numbers uh, and tell them that this, uh, in fact, is not the break in the case we, we hope for. Probably one of the hardest calls I ever made. Probably one of the hardest. Probably should have never made the first one. But everything looked right at the time. Natalie's father was home in Mississippi when the call came. What was it like for you to once again have a setback? That's probably about the time that um, the chest pains intensified to an extreme. I mean, how many times can I take this? You know, it's, it, it's a disappointment, but you have to look at the magnitude and, and the sacrifices being made even to get to that point. I mean, you didn't know these folks before this happened. No. What do they represent to you now? They represent heroes to me. To be sure there was no relevant evidence, material from the trap was given to the FBI. For the Holloways, though, another wild ride began. This bizarre story originated here, in the Central American nation of Nicaragua. It happened last month when Natalie's father, Dave, received a message from a man who called himself Marcos. He said he had important information about where they could find Natalie's body. He said, I, he said I've done some wrongs in my past. And he said, this is my way of making all of my wrongs and all of my sins and doing something right. Dave was skeptical. But the phone and email messages continued. In them, a wild tale involving drug runners who said that on the night Natalie disappeared, someone had paid them to take her body and dump it at sea. They agreed, but instead took her remains with them to Nicaragua and hid them on a remote strip of the Atlantic coast. It was a little far-fetched for me. What did he want in return? He told us he didn't want anything. Nothing? None. And that's what part <clears throat> I started believing in this guy that I said, you know, we've got a reward out here. In January, Dave Holloway asked Tim Miller to head to Nicaragua to arrange for a meeting. And to Miller's surprise, Marcos showed up. I didn't live an, um, an exemplary life. I did a lot of wrong things. And maybe this is just one way I tried to even up the, the score a little bit. Marcos wouldn't allow his face to appear on camera, but he agreed to talk to Miller and even officials from the U.S. Embassy. And what was the person from the embassy's take? The person from the embassy said, you know what, I think we may have something here. 
Together, Miller and Marcos came up with a plan. Marcos would take a GPS receiver to the location and leave it there. Miller, accompanied by local officials, would follow the signal to the location and begin to dig. Hello? The next morning, Miller's phone rang. It was Marcos. The search, he said, had been a success. Tonight, before the sun is up, we will be in Managua. But there had been a change in plans. He had the body and would bring it to them in Managua. He has her skull and her arms and her legs and her ribs, and he's, he's got, they got, they got the whole body. And he says she was wrapped in a blanket and her body fell apart. He said, but we had to put her in two ice chests. And he actually said, call Mr. Holloway right now and tell him I've got Natalie. So what do you do? I did not call Dave Holloway to say I have the body. You've been down that road before. I've been down that road before. Did you believe him? It's time I believed him. But after waiting all night for Marcos to appear at the arranged location, nothing. Marcos never appeared again, and Tim Miller and Dave Holloway are convinced Marcos pulled off an incredibly cruel hoax. Why would somebody stoop that low to do something like this? How hurtful is that when somebody does that to you? Very hurtful. In fact, that was... It's wonders I have not had a major heart attack and died.